today's AIO liquid cooler costs a mere 110 to 115 US dollars, but is almost beating close to everything. And keep in mind, we are dealing with a cooling solution that's equipped with a 240 mm radiator. On top of that, there's also ARGB lighting. This, my friends, is Arctic's brand new recipe. Today's review is all about the new Liquid Freezer 2 240 ARGB. Basically, it's more or less an addition to the current well-received Liquid Freezer 2 lineup with attractive pricing. However, it seems now even Arctic, known for always being rather minimalistic, has decided to go with the flow and offer RGB2 to cater to more potential consumers. Right off the bat, with this refresh of this cooling series, as I tend to call it, Arctic has in fact implemented one or two new things. For instance, I was able to witness a whole lot better cooling performance compared to the regular version, and furthermore, the manufacturer now no longer backs their product up with a two-year warranty, but now tripled that number, making it a six-year warranty. That's pretty impressive, not gonna lie. They certainly seem to have faith in their product. How well today's Liquid Freezer 2 in its ARGB version does, and what things you probably should be aware of, you'll find out in this video. First of all, accessories. Typical for Arctic, they're rather minimalistic and don't really include any paper documentation anymore. Besides the AIO cooler itself, all we are really getting is the mounting kit along with the new Good Arctic MX-5 thermal paste. The installation manual you'll have to look up online. However, I'm a little bit disappointed about the fact that the Arctic hasn't gone as far to include a simple ARGB controller. But then again, since most should own compatible motherboards by now, at $110, I don't think we really can complain too much. As we are used to, the AIO unit is ready to go, all assembled out of the box. So the fans have already been attached and the cables are kept nice and short and are well managed to keep them out of sight as best as possible. It becomes apparent right away that Arctic hasn't gone for any proprietary garbage here, instead has gone for the standard ARGB connector. I love that. Furthermore, the pump unit and fans are all being controlled and powered by a single PWM cable. On the one hand, this is extremely convenient and simple, on the other hand, you certainly lose some control if you want to control the pump and fans separately from each other. For most users, though, the installation and connection procedure with that kind of system is made very simple. As for the radiator, as always, we're getting the 240mm aluminum one with a thickness of a whopping 38mm. The radiator also seems to be fairly well built. What catches one's eye, of course, is the pump unit, equipped with a small VRM fan. We are fully aware of that one by now, and there's no need to fear it, it doesn't bite. We are talking of a fan size of 40mm and the speed ranges from 1000 to 3000 RPM at max. Believe it or not, you don't really hear it spinning. Those of you that still feel the need to go without it could take a look at the pump's bottom and simply unplug the fan. The pump itself apparently is an in-house design by Arctic themselves. We are being promised improved efficiency, lower power consumption, as well as quieter operation. The latter I can definitely confirm. That's very true. The pump is barely audible. On the bottom side of the pump, you get to see a copper base and supported are pretty much the most recent mainstream sockets. With Intel, we are in fact also seeing support for the Extreme lineup, as long as we are dealing with a square ILM. AMD Threadripper, due to its gigantic heat spreader, is not supported. AIM4, on the other hand, no problem at all. Now, this specific AIO cooler has that ARGB label slapped onto it. I'd like to point out, though, that only the fans are actually illuminated, and that's perfectly okay with me. Those light up nicely and on paper do offer decent performance, despite the huge focus on low noise levels. In fact, I really like these fans, since even at max fan speed, they are fairly quiet all things considered, and also seem to be well built. Obviously, they also come with those rubber pads to absorb vibrations. What surely stands out is the tubing. It looks quite fancy in my opinion, and the length of 450mm sure is respectable. It's just a bit of a bummer, there are no metal fittings, neither on the pump nor on the radiator. Instead we get a silver cosmetic cover-up out of plastic. This has always looked rather cheap to me, but it's only my opinion. 
Now what's there to say about the installation procedure? These days it's actually very rare to find truly bad mounting systems when it comes to CPU coolers, and there's no exception with Arctic. All very fast and simple, no hassles. What I really, really like is that Arctic in the case of AM4 is offering us two slightly different mounting options, one of which is fairly standard, while the other is more of an offset, recommended for Ryzen 3000 and 5000 processors. So the pump's copper base is slightly offset, so the right components of the CPU are fully and successfully targeted, if you know what I mean. That way more effective cooling can take place in combination with such processors. And that Arctic seems to have accomplished remarkably well, as you'll now see in the temperature results with my AMD Ryzen 7 3800X. While the classic Liquid Freezer 2 240 without any RGB lighting or any sort of offset adjustment managed to offer incredible performance, today's version with ARGB and optimized installation takes it up a notch and offers a few degrees more cooling performance. According to the installation guide on Arctic's website, even those regular Liquid Freezer 2 240 AIOs starting at revision 3 should offer comparable offset solutions. My specific model, Revision 1, back from 2019, does not offer that set offset. Anyway, we are being offered remarkable performance. With today's Liquid Freezer 2 240 ARGB, one doesn't only surpass a lot of those bulky, colossal air coolers, but also other 240mm AIO units. Furthermore, we are also very close to 360mm units performance-wise. When not talking of the greatest CPU load, Today's cooler actually keeps up just as well. Once going for insane AVX loads, where temperatures increase by a fair bit, the gap starts getting wider. However, even in such a case, there's only like 1 to 2 degrees Celsius separating today's 240mm AIO by Arctic from 360mm AIOs by other brands, in my specific case. Despite that, the unit is operating at a remarkably low noise level when it comes to fan and pump noise. That's a pretty awesome achievement by Arctic. We consumers love that. Paired with that very long 6 year warranty and very attractive pricing, I really don't think one can really go wrong with this unit. What I personally would really wish for is a more sleek, minimalistic pump design because in terms of aesthetics, I've never really found that one appealing. But other than that, the Arctic Liquid Freezer 2 240, now in its ARGB version, is definitely worth recommending. Currently, one of the best deals one can make when it comes to AIOs, in my opinion, at least over here in Europe. With that said, thank you so much for watching and take care everyone.